Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. This is a little quick video today about the S10 and some of the improvements I'm making that as far as reducing the weight of the um, rear end pieces. And so what I've got here are some things to show you. Um, so for this is the S10 obviously. Um, this has a quick performance four nine inch housing that's in it. And so all these pieces are for it. So if you're, when I'm talking about this, this is not for a stock GM seven and a half inch 10 bolt we're in this is for a four nine inch so just i ordered it from quick performance uh like a year ago when i did it i ordered with 35 spline axles so these are the ones that came standard they're 35 spline mosures and you could tell from the flange how it's round and circular what i did is i replaced the axles and not because these got tore up or anything it's because of my own stupidity which i'll show you in a minute but um and I'm replacing them with these. These are gun drills, in case you want to go to a gun drill is. This is how they are standard. A gun drill, they just take the drill bit and they drill further down all the way through. Well, not all the way through. and probably stop somewhere in here. But anyway, they do that and then they also do a lightning on the flange. This is the standard flange. That's the lightning flange. But it also looks different from this perspective. You can see where it's been milled out and stuff, so it's lighter. Now, these are half inch studs, they're the same studs as were in the old ones. Some of you might be saying, why don't you run the five eight studs? Well, the biggest reason is, um, I think half inch is fine for what this is doing anyway, but the reason for not doing five eights is because of the wheels. So some wheels like the ones I'm running will not work with a five eight stud, I've tried. So um, that's the reason for running them. I don't think the half inch have anything wrong with this power level anyway. But the real question is, well, how much weight are you actually losing going from the standard one to this one? So I got a scale here, and I'm going to weigh them. And just for the record, most of you know this, Fords have two different lengths of axles. So you're going to have a long one, and you're going to have a shorter one. And so I'm going to weigh them both just to kind of tell you. This is what I mean to have in my old one. When I put these seals in, as for my rear end housing, don't ever do this. I put silicone here on it, and when it got pushed into the housing, which you can kind of tell, uh, it stayed stuck in there. So when I ripped out the axles, because I was just going to change a third member, it ripped out that back piece. And they say it's compromised when those come off. So yeah, I could just change the uh, bearings and been fine, but I was going to switch axles anyway. But anyway, let's get to the weighing them. So let me turn on my scale here. We'll start with the longer ones first. So this is the long one that came standard. So this is the standard one. It weighs in at 19.8 pounds, okay? This is the lightweight one, 16.2. So it lost quite a bit of weight on that deal. Well, three pounds anyway. This one's probably not gonna be so much. This is the shorter one, standard one weighs. I gotta reset this thing. Hold on, scale is kind of funky. Of course, it's going to eat time. There we go. Standard weighs 18.2. And our lightweight one, 16.2. So it lost about three pounds on the longer one and about two pounds on the shorter one. Will this be worth anything for ET? Probably not. I'm just straight up telling you. But I was gonna, I wanted them, you know, obviously I was gonna have to change those anyway. When the new third member was gonna go in for the next engine, um, I was gonna order these anyway, just cause I wanted to give it the best chance it could. So there's that. So at least now you know how much weight's lost. Now I did do some other stuff cause I wanted to show you. On the third member itself, I was going to put in this spool. This is a lightweight, heavy duty, 35 spline spool. We'd actually went to put it in and everything, and uh, well, it wouldn't fit. And the reason why is the strange housing has a different diameter for this. So I was like, ah, oh. and of course I had the wrong bearing that wouldn't fit it. This would have to be machined down. It takes a special bearing, I guess, or a different one. So whatever, I was kind of frustrated. But when we had them off anyway, we thought, well, let's just weigh them. That one's a lighter weight one than this. So yeah, this looks all scalloped and stuff. It's got all these holes here and it looks lighter. This one only has these holes here, the big ones that you can't hardly see. Right there you can. And it's got these holes through here. But other than that, that's it. This thing is about a pound less than this. And you might say, how is that possible? 
This part right here that I'm holding is actually thicker. So that's one of the weights. The flange itself, this is a half inch, that's three eighths. So yeah, um, that was, this spool is a pound less than this spool. Now this ring gear that's now in it, so I'm switching by the way, the whole point of this was going from 430 to 457 gears. This one's been lightened, this was one pound less and it's an REM finish. So if you wonder how much weight you dropped, there it is. So you can drop a pound from doing this. If you got this spool, you could drop another pound. Three pounds for the long one, two for the short one. Now there's one other quick thing I wanna show you. If you get one for quick performance, I didn't put it in and I should have and I'm going to. If you get a housing from them, some of them you could put in these special seals. So what this seal is, and this is the part number in case you're like, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna have auto zone. Anyway, it actually goes, which I can't put it in because this is in the way. See, that's the old rubber. It goes in here first, and then that goes there. So it's like a double seal. Do you have to run them? No, because obviously I wasn't running them before, and it wasn't leaking. Of course, I had silicone. So there's something else for you. And one last thing I wanted to show you, because I thought this was cool, and I probably, everybody else probably knew it existed. This is actually a seal installer. I can get the thing open. This thing's amazing. I wish I'd saw, found this sooner. This is so cool. I didn't. I got this from Auto's under rent. So anyway. It's neat as could be, you could just put it in and bang it in. But this one has got jaws that open up, so I'm gonna... Uh, I can't do it with the camera. There we go. So you can open it up and put a whatever in whatever, it just twists. This is so neat. I wish I'd known this because I don't know how many timing chain covers. I've played Morse code by tapping with a hammer and using a block of wood to hit them in straight. And the whole time they had these at AutoZone. I just would have rented it. It's probably much handier. But anyway, just something I thought I'd show you. It costs $79 to rent, by the way. These seals are only like 10 bucks a piece. So if you got the housing, you could put those in. So anyway, there you go for today. I will, uh, Keith's coming in tomorrow, so hopefully he can put this in. And then, I don't know when we go test them too. They have it on Saturday, and I think the truck could be ready by then. But I gotta get some stuff done around the shop anyway, so it may not be possible. But anyway, there's your weight differences, just so you know. Um, just give me some stuff. If there's something else you wanna know, just let me know. By the way, they only gun drill on 35 spline and 40 spline. They won't do it on 33, 31, or 28. So the reason why is probably not enough material. But anyway, now you know. You guys take care.